Well, today on Nation Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about your whip, about your work truck or van or whatever you get from point A to point B. We're going to talk about it. So if you're a window cleaner or hack just in the service industry, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, welcome. The podcast has been going on almost seven years, so there's like hundreds of hours of podcasts listened to all the way back seven years ago. Uh, so go back, watch, listen, and if you're new to the industry, what's up? My name is Jersey. Nice to meet you. Well, that's what we're talking about today, though, is work trucks, vans, basically your transportation in our industry. And sometimes... People kind of think about it, you know, oh, what should I do with the van versus truck or how am I supposed to do this? And then after they have it, they never think about it again. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that can come out from your work vehicle. And there's a lot of really good things that can uh, basically come out of having an awesome vehicle. So before I get into anything, I want to tell you, if you have a car, if you You have a magnet sign. I'm sorry. Don't have those things. If you're starting off, very easy to say. But work very hard to getting into a van or a truck. We'll talk about that. But if you're having a magnet sign, I know every time I do these, people are like, oh, yeah, I got a magnet sign. It's cool. And that's fine. Your opinion's totally rad. I'm just some dude who knows nothing and talks to myself in camera. But if you have a magnet sign, It conveys the energy that this is a temporary business. That like, uh, at one point he's like, I put the sign on, I'm a window cleaner, take the sign off and I can go to Walmart or something. Right? So first off, second off, if you're running out of car, obviously that does not work for what you need or what you have. Like, yeah, you can kind of make it work. But like, if you hired, you know, a guy to remodel your house and he showed up in a car, with like a ladder on the top of the car, like understand the message you're conveying, right? So with that all out of the way, let's talk vans versus truck to start off with. And I'll tell you, both have their pros and cons. And probably in the vehicle world, I have more people ask me about a van versus a truck than they do like any other part of this. And I'll tell you, neither of them is wrong. Both of them are better than a car or an SUV, of course. But a truck has a bit more kind of unlimited space. Uh, If you're putting a cap on and you're going back to limiting it, and you're now going to have basically with a closed cap kind of a van, right? So there's uh, pros and cons to both. You can put a ladder rack on a van and a truck. If you have an open bed, you can keep more things a little bit taller, but even in a pure water system, it's like 48, what, 55 inches or something, like four and a half feet, something like that. Like you put that in with a cap or in a van. So between a truck and a van, there's not really a benefit of a truck over a van. Now, sometimes people say, well, I could have open access. You know, if I don't have a cap, that's cool. That's true. But if you're going to have a cap, you basically have a van. Now, pros and cons to both, I know, but I did plowing in the winter. And if you're doing that, you need four-wheel drive. And it's easier to get a plow on a truck than a van. Now, you can get 2500 series, 3500 series in vans and things like that, but we don't really need it. If you're bringing a bunch of water in tanks or trailers or something, then maybe. But we ran trucks because of the plowing, but I'll tell you, I kind of really like vans over trucks. Now, no matter what with a cap, you're going to have a huge spot to be a billboard, right? You're going to be able to put it all out there for the world. You're going to be able to advertise drive a business card really so that part's awesome now with a van just like with a cap is you now have a secure spot so if you don't have a location where you can pull your vehicle into a heated enclosed secure location having an open bed truck a stuff sitting in the sun which breaks it down and everything else i'm going to tell you if you have a pure water system and it sits in the back of a truck open to the elements you will get a foul membrane quicker you're going to get algae It's just something that happens in the sun. If you're flushing water 
super regular, that'll help, but you're going to have more access to that. If you have it in a van, being that it's enclosed, you kind of keep your stuff out of that. Vans can also have bins and things set up, and you can also get vans that you can actually walk into, which I think is pretty rad. You got like a workshop area uh, of bins and compartments and everything else, and you still get that giant billboard. I'm not going to talk about um, types of vans versus types of trucks because um, it really comes down to what you need to do. Like, what services do you provide, right? So if you're a pressure washer, you're going to have maybe the pressure washer itself, but then a gas tank. Then do you want enclosure for the gas tank? No, you're not going to have a cap. If you're going to have a buffer tank, then you need something that can carry the water, right? The type is up to you. But if you're like, hey, I'm going from a car or an SUV, what should I get? Vans are cheap. Vans are easy. They're secure. They're enclosed. And it's a billboard. So think about doing that. And I'll tell you, by the way, my allergies are killing me today. So I apologize for my, my snurfiness. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, there's been some vans out there that were very small like cars, which really are nice, really nice on fuel and everything else. But you're limiting your space. And then guys fill those up so stinking fast. So a full-size van is a little bit better of an investment, in my opinion, because I can have more room, I can carry more things, I can have kind of a bigger space, and I'm not on top of each other. The faster you find stuff, the faster you can pull something or change a tool or do a blah, 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 the better off. I know guys who have screening stuff set up in vans. So when they show up to a job and they need screening, they'll do screening right there in the van. By the way, with a van, you can close the door. And um, if you have a Gatorade bottle, you know, then you don't have to use a customer's house, which sounds ridiculous until that day comes. Hmm, telling you. So vans are really good. I like a full-size van. I know they're big, they're clunky, they may not be great on fuel, but it's like driving a giant office. So if you can, go with a van. But no matter what you do, now you have a vehicle, you have, like I said, a driving billboard, you gotta get the thing wrapped. Don't go get a van and then still have a magnet sign. Because then it just looks like you got a rental man. Like, remember, as soon as I pull up or I drive or I somebody sees me driving or somebody sees me parked in front of... Like, it is the way people find you on a day-to-day -day basis. Not searching, not SEO, not any of that stuff. Just in their normal day. If you're parking a vehicle, if you're doing a job, park it on the busiest part of the road so they can see it. If you're driving... You're seeing hundreds of people, maybe thousands. It's a lot, but hundreds will say. We'll see their van, they'll see your picture, they'll see your image, they'll see window cleaning. You gotta wrap it. But you can jack up a wrap super fast. People think that because they have this big space, they just put all this information. And there's so many people out there who have just really wraps that suck. And the unfortunate thing is, is if you create something, you love it. Otherwise, you wouldn't finish. You'd try to change something. So people build these things and they get this wrap. And they're like, look at this wrap. And there's 30 items on there. There's like all this text. Like no one is stopping to read the thing except you when you stare it in the garage and go, man, did I do a good job. A wrap should be eye-catchy first off. Right? So you should have some kind of color or, you know, cool graphic or something to catch people's eye. An all white van that has no writing, no one looks at. How many vans did you see on the way to work? You don't know, but probably a crap ton. You just didn't see them, right? So we wanna be eye catchy, get something there, colors, things. If you're gonna go with the whole blue water dot, fine, everybody does. It's not as eye catchy when everybody does the thing. But if you got like a logo or a scheme or something, it goes on there. But it's not the biggest part, right? You're not going to be, your biggest part of your vehicle is not going to be the bragging of the, you know, walrus logo you have or whatever. I mean, that is very catchy. But if I look at that, I'm not going to get what you do right away. And it's not going to trigger a buying emotion from me. It's not going to create the intrigue. It's not going to get me interested in you. And I'm going to die on this hill. I'll tell you the best 
an absolute most amazing thing you can do to get the best bang for your buck. I mean, you're going to be able to pay this wrap off in like a month, two months doing this. But as to have an eye catchy color, not on the whole thing, because we don't want to blur out. We want to make sure people can see what it is in big, big letters that say window cleaning. But Jersey, I do window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, screen repair, gutter cleaning. I do. Of course you do. But you don't put everything there. You don't look at a billboard for McDonald's and see their entire menu because no one would read that. You've never re read the entire menu. You've skimmed. That's why stuff is bold. That's why blah, blah, blah. You are going to get yourself less people calling if you put more info on your vehicle. You should have window cleaning. You should have your phone number and your website. That's it. Now, in small little things off to the side or something, you know, if you have uh, accreditations or something, you put all that stuff, you know, little badges, fully insured, you know, a lot of Mr. MasterCard logos or whatever, something to kind of legitimize what you got, but not to take away the attention of what you have. The problem is, is that when you have a vehicle that has too much on there, the wrap is just too involved, no one reads all of it. So the last 70% of whatever's on there, no one read anyway, because they lost interest. If you're driving, they can't catch the information quick enough in a glance. And they're not reading it while they're driving, they're gonna get in an accident. They also do not trigger intrigue because if you have 10 things on there, which we all do, 10 things, it instantly assumes you're not great at any of them because you're not specialized. If window cleaning is your bread and butter, if pressure washing is your bread and butter, that's the first thing. And then it is up to you when they go to your site to upsell them, when they call you to upsell them, when they, then you let them know everything else. Don't confuse them in 30 things. Nobody's gonna look at it and go, Oh, window cleaning. I don't really need that. Pressure washing, roof cleaning, uh, gutter repair, screen cleaning. It's gonna... And then they get to the very last one and they're like, oh, I need that. I'll call them. It does not... It, it, there's buying triggers that is, is a psychological thing that's embedded in humans. It's human nature. It is across the board. We didn't invent it. It's been there. Marketing agencies know it. If you're not going with that, you're not going to find a new way to do that. You're not gonna put that other thing. Well, if I got 10 items, I got 10 chances, 10 more people. No, nobody, you, you've lost everybody now instead of gathering more. If my bread and butter is window cleaning and I put window cleaning on there big, if I have some cool catchy picture of cleaning windows or something that's kind of embedded in that eye catchy colors, it stops, it creates intrigue, and those are the people that call because they see that first. That's your bread and butter. How many people have come to you for window cleaning and then you're like, you know, upsell later and you're like, hey, uh, I noticed there's little trees growing in your gutters. We do gutter clean. Oh, wow, you do? Yeah. Yes. Right? Understand, you got to be eye catchy, flashy, and simple. All advertising should be simple, but especially in a vehicle because it's moving. And if it's not moving, they're moving. Understand the fact that if you're parked in front of somebody or a business or a house or whatever, and the car sees it, they're driving, they're moving. If you're at a light and you take off, you're driving, they're staying still or driving also. There's so many things you have to understand. You're not making a brochure. You're not making a website. You are doing a wrap on a vehicle. I'm telling you. And by the way, Touching on wraps, if you're spending three, four thousand dollars on a wrap in your head, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much money. If your average ticket is four hundred dollars, that's ten jobs. How long do you think it'll take you for ten people to see your vehicle and call you? If you're driving this thing every week for four weeks, all you have to do is have ten people call you. Can you not have two and a half people a week call you from that? Okay, say one, one person a week sees this. You're driving it every day, all over. One person sees it, 
and calls. It's going to be way higher if it's a good rap, by the way. The call, your average ticket is $400. $400 a week you're getting off of that. Right? Like, cool. Two and a half months and the thing is paid for. And the year on the wrap of three or five years, you can keep a wrap. Think of the money it brings in you. Don't think of the, oh, it's expensive. Yeah. It's, it's uh, expensive when you pay for it, but it yields amazing results. Okay. If you do decide to go with a truck, not a van, there's one thing that most people get wrong with trucks. And you're going to agree once I say this. If you have a truck that's open, I can see all your stuff. If your stuff looks like super used and gross and dirty and like our tools get, if you're that guy that's got, you know, uh, uh, a tool and it's so beat up, it's, you know, you're like, oh, I should probably, I could see that. Now, no matter how nice the wrap is, how clean the vehicle is, how anything, I'm not calling you because your stuff looks gross. Like our jobs are to clean. The way to clean is taking dirt from one place and removing it. It's going to get on us. It's going to get on our hands. It's going to get on our gear. It's going to get on things, right? If you get a white bucket, it's going to look like crap after like a day. That makes sense. It's dirt. You're right. But now it's not about that this makes sense and it's going to happen. And all of us in the industry are like, yeah, of course it's going to happen. What it is, is people don't understand the concept. They see dirty. Say, well, you're not cleaning my, you can't even keep your stuff clean. It will get dirty. We know that, but I have to change my equipment out whenever it starts looking a little dirty so that people don't get shined away. How many times have you seen, especially in some of the pressure washers, you see like the uh, splash and dasher kind of pressure washer shows up in a truck that's got smashed up fenders and they got their surface cleaning hanging on the top and it's yellow, was yellow, and now it's all dirty and scuzzy and all their gears all dirty and their hoses are all beat up and you're like, this dude better be cheap. They show up and they charge you like a normal price. And you're like, no. Nah. If I wanted that, I would expect to pay way less. But if you show up in a truck that's got brand new equipment and stickers and it's washed and cleaned and all your gear looks fantastic, like, man, I'm going to pay some, but this dude has got it. Understand if I can see your gear, it is now a selling point that I can see your gear. And I know I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. And of course, that's what I would say. But Boom, transition time. You know my shameless plug all the time. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. It is literally what I do for a living. And what I do is I help people. Uh, first and foremost, I talk to hundreds of window cleaners uh, a week, which is amazing. But how do you kind of, you know, pay me back is what a lot of people say. They're like, man, I got so much value out of this. How do I, I want to do something nice for you. All you have to do, if you ever get any value from anything that I put out there, to like virtual high five and give back if you want, is to let me put your orders in. And I'm not ashamed to say I want all of your orders, all of your everything, every little orders, big orders. I get credit for every single order I put in. And all you have to do is say, Jersey, everything's in my cart, man. Click save this cart and I can see it and I enter it. I check your uh, address. I can make sure fitment works. I can answer questions for you and uh, make it absolutely phenomenally easy. If you don't have it in your cart and you're on a roof and you're like, oh man, I forgot I need this. Just text me. Dude, I need a gross of Adore 18 inch rubber. Sweet. You still at 123 Fake Street? Yeah, let's do it. Done. That's easy. I do that. I make credit. I can afford my uh, hair gel, brand name Band-Aids, uh, brand name paper clips. I got that one. And uh, as my uh, hair starts to slowly gray, probably hair dye also. So, yeah. Do that. My number is 862-312-2026. Save that number. Literally, save it in your phone as Jersey. I'm the only Jersey you know. So do that. Also, of course, uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine. The new iteration is here. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't yet, go and get your subscription. Um, be better than your competition. They may not be getting it. I want you to have it. It's awesome articles, cool pictures. Just, man, you want some good vibes in the window cleaning industry, check it out. It's awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription. Um, and, um, and yeah, if you're listening now, uh, secret, 
Uh, I have one coaching slot open, open back up. Uh, I do like an approval and um, uh, the last one just wasn't a good fit for us. So it kind of um, backed out of that one. Anyway, if you're looking for any type of private coaching, it's a weekly call type thing. Uh, first come, first serve. Uh, I can't tell you by the time you're listening, this will be available, but hit me up uh, if you want. Uh, text me, call me, whatever. Anyway, okay. Back to uh, your whip and uh, work vehicles in general. Um, and I'll tell you, I always joke about this part, but this is one of the worst ones that I see because it's so fixable, but it's driving a dumpster. Like, I know you're busy. Awesome. I know your guys drive the truck. Well, I don't know. It's they drive. It is up to you and only you to make sure everything is clean. 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 Does not indicate new or anything other than who you are. Now, you got people in there, of course, but they don't see the people. It's not, you know, Tim and Bill are in that truck and they didn't keep it clean. I don't like Tim and Bill, but I like the company. Nope, they see the company. If you drive in a vehicle that's got crap on the dashboard, first off, that's like my biggest pet peeve. Don't do that. It looks awful. Keep a folder. Put something on the chair. Have a... Have. If you show up and you got crap falling out of your car, if you have stuff on your dashboard, if you have anything like that, I don't want to hire you to clean my stuff. Just like the equipment, just like the truck, just like the everything. If you show up and there's mud splatters and you can't see anything and it hasn't been washed in six years, there's like black stains from exhaust, I'm not going to hire you to clean anything when you can't keep what you have clean. It shows a level of respect on that one. And like, yeah, I'm so busy. You don't work 24 hours a day. It does not take a long time to go through a car wash or on the you know Friday of every week when they bring the trucks back. Okay, wash the truck. Both of you do it. It'll take five seconds. Put so soap, Dawn even, in a bucket, fill it with water, wipe it or brush it down, rinse it off, dry it, done. It takes no time. A car wash is what, 15 bucks? Yeah, I know. If you got ladder racks and stuff like that, you got to go touchless. I get that part too. If you have a pressure washer, throw a foam cannon on it. Like keeping your gear, including your truck, including your person, including everything, that shows a level of respect for yourself. Like if you're a dirtbag in the rest of your life, that's cool. That's fine. But don't go, hey, I'm a dirtbag and everything else, right? I can't wash my own car, though. Like, that's fine, right? If, if you are whatever you are, remember, the business is the business. If you show up in a dirty truck, your business is dirty. If you got 20 trucks on the road and you show up in a dirty truck, that's your business. It's not the truck or that crew or the... It's the business. And the same thing goes with the condition of your vehicle. Now, no matter where you are, and let me put this out there. I'm not telling you to go buy brand new vehicles, but sometimes people are like, oh, I gotta find a used vehicle. Why? Even if you're paying $600 a month for a vehicle that's new, you don't have to worry about it breaking down. It looks new. It's amazing, and it's six hundred bucks. What are you? What are you averaging? hundred dollars an hour? So you have to work six hours in the month to pay for the truck. Pretty sure that'll happen, right? There's people who even lease vehicles. There's fleets for that reason. Every three years, it's a rotation. You always always have nice vehicles. You always have vehicles you can you can um, you know rely on. Always have great looking vehicles. Like I don't understand why everybody's so scared of investing in something like that in their company. They're more willing to, well, I'll go out there and buy a $5,000 truck. Well, I don't like to carry debt. I'm running a business with no debt. Ugh, neat. 
Like, if that's fine if you're a millionaire, but if you're not a millionaire, you kind of have to have debt to have the things that make nice so your business can grow. Don't show up in a $5,000 truck, and when you open the door, it squeaks and crap falls out, and you're like, but I paid for it in cash. No one cares that you're cheap. No one cares that your overhead is better. What they care about is what your image is. That's how you get new customers, keep ones happy, show off your customer, give them a feeling before they get a feeling. And the condition of vehicles, I know guys that have duct tape on windows to hold their windows up. Guys that have smashed fenders. Guys that have not washed their trucks so long that their rims are black. They're supposed to be chrome or something. I know guys that have literal broken windows, smashed windows. A pole fell in front of you know a lock and they smashed the window to get into it on a job site and it's been like that for years. Rust, dents, fading wraps or cracked wraps. Like at this point, you don't care. I can't get behind you caring about my, like I can't look at you and be like, oh, this guy doesn't care about anything of his. He'll totally care about my stuff. Understand that there is a conveyed image in all of this. It's very easy for people to not believe that. But if I am six foot six, covered in tattoos, face tattoos, I have a mohawk, and I wear a leather, you know, biker vest, I don't go up to you and go, yes, I am a uh, kindergarten teacher. I would like to babysit your kid. You would instantly, you can just picture the person I made up, but you're instantly like, no, like, no. I want the, you know, the little sweet old lady who's just loving and I want to love, right? Understand you will always have a conveyed image. You will always convey a message with your image. You will always tell people something about you without telling people something about you. Always. And it's everything. And I'll tell you, if you don't believe that fact, I've said this a couple times, the largest contract that I've ever had was an accidental thing. And it was a, um, it was a fleet for fleet cleaning. Now, I didn't have any of the gear. I didn't have any equipment. I didn't have anything. I happened to bring it up and they were like, yeah, we want a demo next week. I'm like, oh crap, I got to go out and spend, you know, $20,000 overnight to build this thing. Plus I got to buy a truck and it was a whole thing. I show up on this giant gamble and the guy I'm meeting with is talking to the guy running one of the uh, trucks that moves, you know, uh, trailers all over, semis, semi-trailers. And he's talking to me smoking. He's not even looking at me. He's not looking at me. I shook his hand. He's not looking at the job I did. He's not looking at anything. He could be less interested. I'm like, man, dude, I just spent 20 something thousand dollars and this whole gamble is garbage. I'm like in the middle of cleaning. I'm like, well, you know, I guess I could just keep finding other ones. I mean, I got the equipment now, you know, I get all, get all done. The guy's cool. He puts a cigarette out. Oh, you're done already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I was like, yeah, hey, you know what? I just want to say again, thank you for, um, you know, letting me do a demo for you. Yeah, absolutely. He's, what, what are you able to start? He's like, well, we'd like to at least do two weeks just to let the other company know. I was like, oh, man, I, 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 I guess, uh, yeah, that absolutely. We can start right away. We'll get it all planned, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I got to tell you, man, I didn't think you were even interested at all. I mean, you were just, you know, kind of hanging out. And I, I was like, I was kind of bummed. He goes, nah, man. He goes, I knew the second you pulled up through the gates, I saw your truck. I was like, yeah, all right. I don't have to watch this guy. I knew that I knew everything about you right away. And it was because my gear was brand new. I mean, I just took labels and, and, and stickers off the stuff. I mean, I had just gotten it, but I did the truck up the way I wanted to. It was pristine awesome. I didn't make it work. Did I spend money? Yeah. But that was also a $100,000 account. And I got it just because of the way I looked. If that doesn't convey any message to you, Think about it the next time you see a work truck on the road. If I showed up to your job 
and I had decals on my Lamborghini that said XYZ window cleaning, you'd be like, oh my gosh, this dude is so expensive. If I showed up in a vehicle that is leaking oil, smashed up, I can't get it started in your driveway. And I'm like, yeah, I'm here to clean your windows or give you a bid. You'd be like, dude, this, this guy is not going to even show up. He's probably on drugs. He can't even, he's not using any of my, like you're conveying the image. You understand it. You see it. This is what's happening in your work truck. And so many people miss that. So any vehicle you have, understand the fundamentals, understand the message it tells people before you even say anything. That's new customers just driving around. If you have a wrap or a vehicle or whatever, magnets, anything, you're not getting lots of calls from that. It's because something sucks. Understand that people get a message from you before you even say anything. I'm telling you, work vehicles, man. Work vehicles. All right, I'm off my high horse. At least till next week. Or at least until you call me and I tell you some other things that I get passionate about and then, uh, you know, nerd out on. But anyway... I am a nerd and I want to be your nerd for window cleaning. So if you got questions on anything or there's anything I can help you out or especially, shameless plug, if I can put orders in for you, please let me. Literally cost you nothing extra, not a penny more, and I get credit for it. And I like that because I would like to live and feed my children and myself. So let me put your orders in, please. Uh, 862-312-2026 and... If you haven't yet, man, you got to go get yourself the magazine. What are you waiting on? It's like $69, man. It comes with stickers every single month for your buckets, for everything else. It comes with uh, the paper magazine shipped to your door every single month. Pictures and articles and uh, writings, journalists and posters and just like stuff like this. I mean, how cool is that? We're in this industry. Be proud of this industry. Even if you're new, you're just finding this podcast, there's a magazine for that. Like, all your information will make you better. That's just one of them. You're listening to a podcast about window cleaning, so yeah. Anyway, go and do that. But more importantly, make sure your whip is correct and uh, not hurting you, but helping you. But more importantly, go out there and be happy.